The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 2, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate various reading and viewing strategies for comprehension and appreciation. Learners should be able to skim texts to identify main ideas by reading titles, introductions, first paragraphs and introductory sentences of paragraphs. Learners should also be able to scan texts for supporting details. Hello and welcome to this lesson. You should now be able to glance over a text and pick out specific information. You should also be able to look over a text and find out the general idea. Scanning means that you're looking for something in particular. Skimming involves an overall understanding of an article or text. At school, you often use scanning when looking through the notice board. You are frequently required to check to see if you are on a team or whether you are required to attend a meeting. This is where scanning is useful. When you are faced with a notice board covered with paper, what do you look for first? I hope you said that you would first look at the list that applies to you. You would do this by looking through the headings. Once you have found the relevant list, what do you do? Usually time is rather limited because other people behind you also need to consult the lists, so it's important that you check for your name quickly. What would be the quickest way to find your name on a list? Clearly, you would do this by scanning the list for the first letter of your name or surname. It's a lot easier if the list is in alphabetical order. So, for example, if your surname was Brown, you would look towards the top of the list. And if your surname was Matlangu, you would look in the middle of the list. You may find other names which begin with the same letter as yours, but you will soon realize that they do not apply to you. Once you have found the first letter of your name, you will have no problem in checking the other details on your list, such as your position in the team or the venue of your meeting. In this way, scanning will have assisted you in discovering certain essential information quickly and efficiently. In what other ways can scanning be used? Here are some examples that I've found. You would scan when reading these texts. Looking through a telephone directory for the telephone number of a friend. Looking up the directions to an area that you have never visited before in a map book. Or paging through a television guide to discover when a particular program is being aired. If you think about it, you've probably been using scanning for years, even if you didn't know what the technical term for what you're doing was. Try to think of some other important uses for scanning. Now let's look at how skimming can be used outside of the classroom. Remember, the skill of skimming can be compared to a stone skimming across the water. You dip in occasionally as you read, just like a stone briefly touches the water as it moves along. When you think about the skill of skimming, you will realize how useful it really is. If you practice it, it will get easier and easier, and it will help you in all sorts of ways. Remember, skimming is about getting the general idea of what something is about. How do you think that you use skimming in everyday life? Here's just one example. If you're given a flyer by someone at the robot, you glance at it to see what it is about. You may be given pamphlets on new housing developments, gearbox reconditioning, 
get-rich-quick schemes, a fast food promotion, or cheap insurance. How many of these pamphlets do you think will be relevant to you? Probably not many. On the one hand, you don't want to spend hours reading through information that is irrelevant to you. And on the other, you don't want to lose information that you might be able to use. This raises an important question. How do you decide what information is important? First, you check the headlines. Headlines. These should give you a good idea of what the leaflet is about. If it is irrelevant to you and your life, you can discard it. If you want more information, you can look at the pictures. Pictures. Most pamphlets are colourfully illustrated because advertisers know that people's brains often respond to visual images more quickly than words. Skimming through pictures is a good way of absorbing a lot of information quickly in order to immediately determine whether the product shown is something that you need. If you're still not sure if the information is important, then look at the bold print. Bold print. Words written in bold print are designed to stand out because they are keywords or crucial information. By now, you should know enough about what the pamphlet is offering to decide whether you want to read through it or not. The process I've just described may seem complicated, but actually, I'm sure you already do this to some degree, and it just takes seconds. Now, you're probably wondering why it's important to determine how to deal with pamphlets. Well, pamphlets are just one form of information that we encounter every day. How many other texts do you think you encounter in a day? Think about emails, SMSs, television, newspaper articles, billboards, and street signs. Literally thousands of texts bombard you every day. Some you will want to read properly, but others are unimportant for you. There's no way that you can read and process all the texts that you encounter. So it's important that you develop skills that allow you to determine whether information is important and relevant. Now, what about texts where some of the information is useful and interesting to you, but the rest isn't? Let's have a look at the example of a newspaper. How do you skim and scan when reading the newspaper? When you pick up a newspaper, you don't read every article in it. If you did, you'd do a great deal of reading every day. Step 1. Find the section that interests you. Most people turn to the sections that interest them most. If you love sport, you would go first to that section. If you were a stockbroker, you would go to the financial indicators. If you were a gardener or planning a weekend away, you would check the weather. Once you have found the section that interests you, it's time for step two. Step two. Focus on articles likely to include interesting information. If you are a soccer fan, you will ignore articles on horse racing and tennis, even though these would be found in the sports pages. You may have a favourite player whose performance you are closely following. In this case, you would scan through the articles until you find one on soccer. You are then ready for the next step. Step 3. Skim through the article to see if it addresses your needs. This step involves skimming through the article to see if it mentions your favourite player. If it does, then you would be ready for the next step. Step 4. Read the entire article with interest. By following these steps, you will cut down on the time it takes to find the information that is interesting and relevant to you in the newspaper or in any other text 
which contains a lot of information of which you need just a small bit. Usually, we use the skills of skimming and scanning together. It's difficult to separate them as they both help us to gather the information which we need. Try to practice these techniques as often as you can. They will save you time and help you to organize your ideas. In our next lesson, we will concentrate on extracting key information from a text and on constructing a working mind map. These skills will really help in learning facts. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for joining me today and goodbye.